and welcome to a thankful episode of the Friday Night Movie Podcast because this is our annual Thanksgiving episode. It's being recorded on Thanksgiving morning. It is where we talk about all of the things in pop culture we are thankful for. And we have with us a special guest. Kristen Farnham is returning because she is our actual guest for Thanksgiving. Welcome back. Thank you. It's very good to be here. She's already hugged dad. Mom hasn't appeared yet. I don't know where mom is. Is mom in your house, Becky? She should definitely be back at your house with my children. So maybe they got distracted on the way. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. They should with, be. With that gray hair. Her um, nails look good. I saw her red nails. Oh, she, she does look good. You know how I know she looks good? Last night, when we finished Menorah in the Middle, she recorded a review that I posted. That's how I saw the nails. And I will say... At least one of her equivalently aged friends from her year course from her Israel trip in the 1970s definitely like kind of hit on her on Ooh, our crazy. like definitely talked about how gorgeous she looks and how much more gorgeous she looks. And mom always talks about how handsome he was in the day. I think he looks like Buddy Hackett, but, you know, <laughs> just saying. All right. Um, before we get into it, I do have a story at the top. Because I, I, this is a very knowledgeable group, um, particularly uh, this is a real diagnosis Becky situation. Mm. So my shoulder has been hurt since December 26th, 2021, when I went axe throwing with Lillian, Jose, and Allie. And as it turns out, the, na the nature of this injury, so says the first orthopedist I spoke to and the second doctor that I went to is that it's just bad enough that it might hurt for the rest of my life, but not definitive enough an injury, even though it's in three different parts of my tendon, that they can remotely say surgery would help make it better. Like, I would have been better off having my arm torn off and reattached if I wanted the pain to go away. So That's insane. So I was recommended so to go... Sorry. Can you get a quarter zone shot? I got that a while ago. It helped a little bit, but you can't do those indefinitely. Forever. You can't do it forever. So I was told. I don't by, know. Ask dad about that. I was, told, I was told by dad is two <laughs> inches shorter now. Dad is two inches shorter than me now. He was two inches taller you would, than me. You would think the cortisone would make him taller. Yes. No? <laughs> Injections? Okay. And so. So I was recommended by a personal trainer to go to a, a, I've never seen, it's a sports medicine type of clinic. The, the technical training of the doctor is a physiatrist, which I definitely have That's to look That's a made up word. That's a thing. I, it, I mean, it's, I, That's I checked, a bunch of ethics is just put together. I, I asked the doctor, yeah. I said, okay, okay. So you're not a surgery doctor at the end after. Or a psychiatrist. He was, lovely, he was lovely, by the way. Lovely doctor. And by the end of the conversation, I finally said, I said, okay, you made it clear you're not a surgery doctor, which is great. I said, what kind surgeon? of doctor? surgery doctor is what my five-year-old calls it. I think you mean <laughs> <Yeah>. a surgeon. <laughs> no, but I mean, he like doesn't perform surgery, so, but he's a medical doctor. So he's not doctor. a surgeon. So surgeon. He's not a surgeon. So he's not he's a not surgeon. surgeon. <laughs> and, and so I said, I said, okay, you made it clear you don't do surgery. What kind of doctor are you? Like, I didn't mean to be a dick about it, but clearly he's used to the question. So he explained to me something. It's, it's, it's essentially he a sport. made up an entire medical profession. So. No, it's it's a sports medicine doctor, but not the surgery kind. So like they do not they live in the world of, of they live in the world of ultrasound and like not like treatments that are non surgical okay it's not an occupational therapist no no no. this but he's a doctor okay, okay. the point is is there are a couple of newfangled therapies that are being that that are that they do there that i'm not even a by the way not even a great candidate for it's like they're like these might work for you but the nature of your shoulder injury is such that mm, not sure the first one which is the one i will likely try in a few months they pull blood out of your arm they spin it up and just oh, take the platelets that's what kim kardashian did yeah, that's why face. i was and put it in your face vampire face not, not on my face they 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 put just a little bit of the platelets into your into so the injured area just so gorgeous i'm just i'm not saying so i'm not enjoying 10 years this. younger your shoulder will look 
Wait, I I'm not saying I'm not enjoying this conversation. I'm just not sure how it applies to our podcast. <laughs> this applies to our podcast. People want to know Shy's getting the people Kim do want to know this. Shoulder treatment. Facial it applies to Hollywood. Right, exactly. Because oh, here, there we oh. go. So the second treatment, your alternative is, treatment. So the other treatment that I am a candidate for. Shai doesn't, they, doesn't need medicine. He doesn't. He doesn't need science. He can go the, see a physiatrist. They take. They take a liposuction of your butt. Liposuction is the word that they used. Liposuction of your butt. And I said, wait a minute, wait, do my it. butt? I'm like, I, I my first thing I said was, my butt is like the only part of my body that looks as good as it did 25 years ago. <laughs> I don't need anything taken out of my butt. How about my stomach? He goes, those fat cells aren't as good for this. So they take a- I'm sorry. Cup. So you're getting- liposuction and a vampire facial on your shoulder wait, 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 wait. more importantly might be covered by insurance no it's definitely not they made that very clear <laughs> okay. he was okay. like this is none of this is so they pull the this is fda approved i'm not sure if it's fda approved for this but it, it they pull the fat <laughs> they they strain it or something and they take out all like the oil or whatever and then they shoot the fat back, back into your that's how they make your pecs look bigger, but your yeah, yeah. tummy smaller. That's what you're saying. So they're going to give you that. fake muscles in your arm and hope that I, it works? I, like, what's the plan? I, I don't know, but Allie's response. Allie's was, definitely was, signing up. Allie's minute. like, my shoulder's killing me. You, she said, you're getting a butt lift I to need. fix your shoulder? shoulder. <laughs> I got butt lift in the outline because I am from Los Angeles and unfortunately more familiar with these things than I would care to be. I was like, oh, because, you know, they put like an actual... Uh, you know, like a boob, like an implant. Uh, for a implant. Butt. Oh, butt. really? They yeah. do. There are butt for implants. The butt lifts. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you please? I, yeah. I mean, I don't. I, my do butt is the only part of me that looks the same. I've never considered it. There are many, many walking around in Hollywood with. They, they also inject in them. They yeah. Also inject the butts with oh. stuff. But I was thinking when I saw that in the outline, I was like, well, yeah, okay. So it's like you just put a little armor in the butt and then that's going to offset the shoulder. I was like, okay. That makes sense. And and I am for anyone who needs to get cosmetic surgery for anything that's going to make them feel better about life. Allie's like, these crow's feet are really hurting. Go for it. Talk to her. But I just, I feel like the people of our podcast. Psychiatrist. I need to hold on to Ukrainians instead. That's why I look (laughs) this way. Because, yeah. So I just thought I wanted to be thankful for my health. And, um, and that. Uh, th- this is I'm the kind of things that I'm worried right. about. I don't know, Be- Becky. Did you have a thought on this? A further thought on this? Look at her face. She's like, no. I mean, I, mean, I wish. I think you should, you should just take a picture of my face. Be- and Becky. Becky that. loves like a Ouija board style. I mean, treatment. that's fine. I just feel like the next step is you're going to tell me to to cure your shoulder. You're going to have to go gluten free, and I'm just like, no, all right, no. I, that's the next thing. Uh, gluten free, like I'm gluten free, dairy I'm free. Say, I'm not going to say it's shoulder. made up, but it might be. I would say like like they say things are overdiagnosed these days. I I think it's applied a little too broadly. It's a little it's yeah. a little broad. But importantly, the shoulder injury, if you didn't mention this already, is as a result of karate. Right. No, 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 axe throwing. No axe throwing. Oh my God, that's even better. No, 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 but I didn't get hit by an axe. axe. I was just was throwing it. Throwing. I, I was the best axe thrower in the group. Okay. Shy, now, the, shy, yes. have we have we learned a lesson about doing activities? Oh yeah, we have. We I mean, I haven't done an activity that I, what, I, no, that's what I've decided. At, at, I'm, I'm going to turn 43 in a few days. And just no new, no new activities. Everything that I've learned at yep. this point, I will, I can do. But there's nothing else that's getting voted on the island. It's about winnowing. The Atlantic did a great article on this. Winnow (laughs) in the last half of life. Friends, activities, all of it. (laughs) So, but what we talk about at this time of the year is what are the, and I want to think big here, trends or or themes, because we're going to talk about our favorite actual movies and shows later later in the year when we when we do the wrap up of the year but but i like phenomenons whatever you want to say i have two that i want to start with and then i'll pass it along to farnham and then lily and becky but my, my big th- and, and everyone think what are you thankful in pop culture and 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 just think about that while i riff here one is 
I think this is one of the best years of movies I have had in a long time. Like, I'm not saying this is like that Pulp Fiction year, you know, where all the, the those incredible, there was like back-to-back years of like Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump and all that. But I'm just going to list some of the move, like just so many great, I just saw so many movies where I was like, yes, my time was well spent. That was either innovative or hit the sweet spot. We had Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, Top Gun Maverick, RRR, Bullet Train, Hustle with the one with Adam Sandler. When Lily said she watched it the other day, I thought she meant the Becky. J-Lo movie. Um, Becky, but yeah. Uh, Becky, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, uh, 13 Lives. Watch that on vacation with my in-laws. And then I want to give uh, a Menorah in the Middle, which we'll talk about later in the shout outs. And then I will say the the other holiday movie or the other, the holiday movie for probably most of the world of this year is Spirited, which is Farnham watched it with us. Yeah. We're watching my suggestion. Yeah. Will Farrell, Ryan Reynolds. Okay. And we're watching this movie. And in the first few seconds, Farnham pipes up and says, This is some Oscar worthy choreography. And I'm like, huh? huh? And I'm watching it. And the dancing is like really high end. I figured this was going to be like a phone it in, you know, holiday movie. And the dancing was, and, and each scene was more innovative and the tap dancing and this and that. Okay, good. Many genres too. Many genres. And, and the chorus of dancers was huge. Then the singing. And then you notice like, oh, it's a musical and the musical is good. What the heck? And then it's funny and it's playing on themes in many layers. And even though it's a Christmas theme because it's a Scrooge story, it really wasn't like a heavy Christmas theme. It was like Scrooge the movie with... Bill Murray and that it was really a, like a morality tale and, and 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 so I got to give it to Apple Plus and Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds they they like delivered something high quality but then on top of that on top of that um the music was done by the guys who did Greatest Showman and uh Dear Evan Hansen and the dancing at the end I noticed in the dancing chorus I said oh there's Chloe Arnold and Maude Arnold of Chloe and Maude, who are DC-based tap dancing masters, geniuses, and and uh, Chloe uh, choreographed the film, and she and Maude trained the dancers and 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 danced in it, and and I realized like this is this is a mega high quality thing. And don't you I, think it was I loved a little it. early? No, they, Christmas things get often like, released in in maybe not giving time. enough. Really? I just feel like it just I don't kind of came I, out I don't know but I'm publicizing it right here. This Jew's favorite Christmas movie of the year is 100% Spirited and it goes in my top ones of all time period. And this typical loather of musicals <laughs> also puts it in my top holiday movies wow. i do not like wow. movies, and i loved this i was like ryan reynolds yes sing? you can start singing again it's okay um, they, oh they sing it's not just they dancing sing. they sing but but real but i would the there's more emphasis on the ensemble choreography and the chore- choreography in general which i think makes for a more entertaining movie for more people so even if if you're listening out there and you're like i don't do oklahoma i don't do musicals mm. this is for you hmm and it's very funny, very funny. And without any spoilers, there's some inclusive stuff that happens, but you got to wait till the end. That's nice. And That's nice. And, and I would like to, and the other theme that I really love this year, and this is a little more serious, but the number of Jewish artists, entertainers, and creators that have been out there speaking about their identity, speaking about anti-Semitism, Zionism, all of these things, I think has really meant a lot to me and to us. And just to shout out a few, you know, David Bedil, his book and his documentary, Sarah Silverman, Hannah Einbinder, Jill Kargman, the great Dan Byrne, our new friend, Han Drachman. These uh, folks are, 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 are saying really interesting, thoughtful things that really resonate with me. And I really love seeing it in pop culture. So thank you to them. Farnham, over to you. Okay, now, uh, first of all, as a long coveter, I've had a hard time following complicated plots and subplots. So as opposed to movies this year, I have been focusing on stand-up comedy, um, five-minute bits, 10-minute bits, specials. I've seen every special out there. Um, 
you know, laughter is good therapy. And especially if you're feeling infirmed, it's very helpful. It actually, you know, it matters. Um, I'm, and I know not everybody's into the, to quote Neil Brennan, um, comedian, writer, writer of the Dave Chappelle show, the other writer besides Dave Chappelle. Um, he has coined the phrase, a traumedy special. Um, he did three mics uh, a couple years ago. His latest one is called Blocks, um, where he discusses mental health. He also discusses um, why, quote, he's not going the way his boy did in terms of open-mindedness. I just like this, um, you know, as someone who maybe doesn't have until recently, the wherewithal to pay attention to an entire movie, Spirited did make me realize I have this ability back. But it just like, I like the storytelling that comedians are starting to do in their specials. So you can go, you know, you do a short bit or you watch them work out their stuff for 15 minutes separately on YouTube. That's exciting. That's all laughs. That's all punchlines. But I've, and I know it's controversial because not everybody's going to, people are like, just get to the punchline, stop trying to whatever. I enjoy this because I do, I've known a lot of comedians in my time and obviously in order, we all know in order to make people laugh, you kind of have to source some sort of pain in your life or whatever. I like the interweaving. So that's a trend that heretofore would be the kiss of death in comedy, but I think it's valuable for, um, is a social service writ large because people, what are, what are they looking to comedy to do to, to alleviate something? And then when they can also have someone be relatable, I think that's good. Um, and uh, I also want to discuss, or should I pause there to see if anybody else has any, if, if anyone disagrees with the traumedy trajectory, that's no, fine. Too. No, I'm wondering if you've seen his um, episode of with Seinfeld, like writing in cars, getting coffee. And Not yet. And that's a but short. We can watch that today. Yeah, but I'm like holding. Is it as good as I think it's going to be? It's it's very funny. Yeah, okay. and it's okay. it's that's like a delicious sort of like hug that show. So yes, that's, and it's not long at all. So it's I think and it's that's great. Funny. And that's I think um Jerry Seinfeld didn't he just like he either really he did some re release. There ten, there's a, a ten coffee table bug. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it is. And yeah, ten year anniversary of the show. Yeah. And then um, we may have discussed or you may have discussed this on the show before, but we the last time I was in town together, we watched ABC's The American Rescue Dog Show. Um, Benny, who was a personal friend um, in the underbite the category. The underbite, yeah. yeah, the dog with the underbite. I recently mm. visited Benny in Chicago. He's a good friend of my dog's boo boo. And oh, um, Benny's doing great. He it's, you know, it has a gun to his head. It ha well, he didn't win, but he's but he's fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe next year. Um, anyway, we felt that that was like in a time of division in this country and not everyone loves dogs and some people are afraid of dogs, but this was a very nice, um, hysteric, hysterical copy wriggle. What's that for guy's first name? Oh yeah. Yeah. Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle. Great delivery. It was just good copy. I mean, good, uh, good, good comedy writing, um, fun for the whole family brought people together. We laughed out loud. I want to see it again next year. I hope they keep doing it. That's awesome. What a nice the very are... last thing. This is the large trend, not even specific to any one group. What I'm seeing from artist consortiums that I used to work with in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, in other places that are having terribly hard times right now is the trend throughout history, war and conflict breed excellent art visual performance music sure. composition um i'm that those are the accounts i'm following alongside new stuff because it, it really does give you hope that's awesome that's cool. awesome all, all right lily um what are you thankful for this year so i'm thankful on for my only movie going experience this year which was <laughs> Like my my movie theater, the only movie theater I went to this year was um, a wonderful experience going to see a wonderful movie that blew everyone away this year, I think, which was when I went to, I got to go see Top Gun with my husband and there was no one else in the theater because it was playing in English. So it was just the two of us. And it was a lot of fun because he, if I like to talk in a movie, that guy loves to talk during a movie. And so at one point I was like, I literally can't hear Tom Cruise. You need to shut up. Um, I can't hear you it, over the dark I stuff. Can't, exactly. <laughs> and so I'm like about 
you know, to go Mach 10 on you if you don't shut up so I can watch the movie. <laughs> so it was, a, it was, it was, it was so fun. Like the movie was amazing, but also the whole experience was amazing. And it was great just to be able to go. Um, and then I'm really grateful. Like, I think as good as you've said, like, Shai, you made a great point about movies this year. As excellent as movies have been this year, and I feel like everybody was sleeping for two years in COVID or or working or or working on their their special things that then then they got a release, or we ha- we we missed so many great things over 2020, 2021, and then they saved them all for 2022. I'll take it. <laughs> the TV like the shows, Vow season two. Like, please, the TV shows have blown my mind this year, and I'm so grateful for shows that are different that are make you think that really blend between good and evil like it's not black and white and and you know the succession i don't succession season three i don't think that was in 2022 right because their season's coming out now or it's like coming in the winter no i think it was succession season three was somewhere in 2022 2022 and now in 20 like right at the beginning of 2023 it should be the yeah because they were nominated for emmys the 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 brother-in-law one the, right. The, oh, right. The yeah. Um, one. Wab- and- Wabazgan one. Right. <laughs> and so, and so a show like that is, is excellent in the sense that it, you know, everybody loves to hate them. Right. But the beauty of the show is that they're not, com- you, they're, they're not all bad, even though they should be. And White Lotus does that. Right. Severance does that. These are shows that came out either their second seasons or third seasons or first seasons that I'm super grateful for because it wasn't like the same. Like I feel like Netflix was really getting run thin. Like there was there's like a scrape in the barrel there of what to watch. And this, you know, not to knock Netflix, but this made me really feel strongly that like shows that are super thought provoking are still people are still able to make them and, and these are, are all, ready to consume them i would describe really these all as shows also where like the effort is just top 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 notch like whatever people got it, paid right. no one's phoning it phoning in it whether they got right. paid a lot exactly. or a little right like, and then and the streaming service too they're like putting you know oomph behind it and like giving you something that's worthwhile is this, then, isn't this how you feel about andor no, I don't. I don't care about that show. No, no. But I do have something funny to say about it. Okay. But hold on. Okay. So then, in that category is The Boys season three. Like, way to bring it, Jesus. Fantastic. Like, like at season three of an Amazon Prime show, you know, you could easily expect it to get like really like jumping the shark, or like you know it's going to end, and then they're you're just like, oh shit, you're doubling down. This is amazing. Um, not for everyone. The disclaimers, and it's worth it to watch a show for the disclaimers. If you read the disclaimers, they're amazing. They basically say, this show is not for anyone. Please do not watch. It is extremely <laughs> inappropriate. No animals were harmed. No one was forced to do anything sexual, but it is not appropriate. <laughs> the disclaimers in front of the boys are like, 100% accurate. There like was an intimacy money. coordinator, so or not. Yeah. Right, right. right. Exactly. They were like, we spent so much money not to harm animals. Animals. So, so like, don't come out. A lot of money don't on watch. CG, so we wouldn't. Right. But they're also like, this is, don't, please don't watch. This isn't for you, which is amazing. Um, And then, so, I, okay. So then I have another category. Well, working, I'm going to say working moms and dead to me. I'm so, I, those shows, I love those shows and dead to me just came out. I just started dead to me. It's so like, good. Oh my God. Christina Applegate. God bless mm. her. I, She's amazing. In my heart, I hope she feels well. And, you know, we're pulling for you and we love you. And she's the best. So I love that show very much. I think that show is like one of the darkest comedies that's been around that doesn't get enough, I think, credit. And then two other things I'm very grateful for. One being the uh, Don't Worry Darling scandals. Oh, you just hear about the movie. Like, like all of the scan- all of all the scandals, of right? Because I was going to say that. That's such a uh, great, yeah. I mean, rarely am I into a scandal, but like, but did Harry did Styles he spit, spit on Chris Pine? It looks like he did spit he? on because him. Because I think he did. He did. I think he, he did, did right? He definitely did. Oh, you oh, look no, at for that sure video. on purpose. No, because he looks like he did he spit on, on him. I'm sure he has those British teeth. I'm sure just spit and like nuggets of crumpet no, he, always flying out of look, his mouth. The look on, <laughs> on Chris Pine's face Pine, it's is not so, one of my favorite things of the year. Exactly. It's not so much Harry Styles. Like, let's remove him from the it's moment. It's Chris, Chris Pine's, Pine's reaction. reaction. Give him is, an Oscar for that reaction if it didn't happen. For, if that didn't imp- happen, right. 
then what he needs is he at the doing very there? least like an Emmy or a Golden Globe for oh, that, like moment. reality. What is he TV saying to us in that moment, moment. with with the his moment. reaction? And, and, and then you thought here? Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde have have broken have up. Ended the relationship. Like, he doctor. should he should send that tape in to casting directors and be like, see how good of an actor I am. He did if it wasn't spit on me, guys. He because didn't spit it was on me, real. But look, I made the world think he did. <laughs> so like. I will that, say those two like, guys ruined electric blue suits for me. Like that, that, that yeah, bright. Yeah, I feel that. Royal well, I think, blue that, I think that was wearing. its I culmination. Couldn't... I think it was like that was its culmination of where it got to us in in pop popular culture and yeah. trends. Like it made that was its that was its end point. It was it was on a train that was getting to the station, and that was the station. So yeah, it makes sense. The they were also moment. wearing those like sockless slipper shoes which oh, for God. no and the loafers beard, like a lot of velvet like, loafers hair. with yeah. no there's a lot suit. that was happening God. also the flat the fact that like do you want to know what i'm do not interested depressed? in seeing you know what i you know what i'm not interested in seeing a man's ankles no <laughs> you just don't find that sexy <laughs> they're very talk about trends yeah. for 2022 the <laughs> man's ankles is a lot but like I don't only like, a man's home ankles, and say to like, my husband, show me those ankles, baby. Now, now, like, now, but, now, Becky, but it's not only that, it's a man's ankles. Website, in, it's like mangles.com. Especially where you see all the man ankles you want. Good socks, like the socks that you wore to the Emmys. It's oh, nice not that's what we should and see. And to my birthday, your, mm-hmm. your custom I wore David the flame Bowie. sock, my David yeah. Bowie socks. Like yeah. an edition David Bowie socks, which people loved. Um, and so okay, so yeah, the scandal around that. Florence not wanting to do press, the infighting, like all I'm here for. Which is, but not which wanting to do press and showing up and showing up being so fabulous, but not yeah, wanting like to do press. With like, oh my God. With like a yeah. cocktail also, in her hand. Like also, just, what's, what's also funny is we've made this into a scandal when really like this is just someone's workplace gossip like it's just like a normal thing it's somebody's regular job right. like are well, they i feel like that's a perfect segue into what i'm most grateful for i have one I'm most thankful for this fine. year we can come back. Oh, okay so go ahead no do do your last one my right. last we'll one is and this is gonna there's no way this for this left. there's no way for this not to sound terrible i thought about it how i'm gonna say this so i'm just gonna say i I'm grateful for season two of The Vow. Well, well hold on. In no I, I, way I am too. I implying that I'm grateful what happened to those poor people. No, no, no. I think what, what like you're grateful it's I'm been grateful exposed in such detail. Story, yes. Right. Both because like I'm taking notes on how to like make sure my kids don't because well, because the thing the of the thing that you really come to understand with The Vow is and and what it struggles through until the very last minute with Nancy Salzman's interviews is like. The people who didn't know what Keith Rainier was up to really thought they were improving their lives at first. Um, and I have oh a confession to make. Are you in were the you in Nexium? You in I was in ESP. Really? <gasps> what? This I'm is sorry, an expose. I I this has turned I'm, in. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I never told you this. So, no. I would, you know, we've been talking, we've been talking about this. We've been obsessing over this. Okay. So, so a lot of, I haven't watched the vow. I tried to watch the other one on stars. I think, you know, it's like, there's a lot of entertainment. There's a lot of, I cannot yeah. tell you how low budget this is. Like I signed up in 2013. I was living in LA, a very close friend who's a fancy MBA, very accomplished woman. She was like, you know, you're, I was looking to learn some more hard skills. I'm not good with technology. I was working remotely on a project. I was like, yes, I want more hard skills. I'll and you're a lifelong ESP. learner. And like I'm you're lifelong. one of these people that is like constantly Always trying and to improve absorbing. This is, this and is exactly like, the kind of people they look for. And improve right? Yeah, but. And I don't mind paying for it, but. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we're in this like pathetic little space watching Nancy Salzman. Do you, no want, you saw the videos. No, like no the kidding. Like, a TV rolled in like it would be in the second grade in the 80s, rolled in VHS style, like play the tape. And I'm like, you know, like week after week, I'm just like, when are we going to get to learning PowerPoint and software? I need like hard skills here. <laughs> and then like, why are we put it so up this confession? Because it was crap. called executive success program and then i said mark vicente was one of my recruiters and like he's like the star of the vow we start okay and listen like this truly the break for me was one of the people and they had a lot of like very uh upper class mexico city people involved yes yes oh my god like the whole like mexican presidential family 
That's so, the whole um, plot of the... Yes. The, the, so I knew all of these people and didn't know who they really were, but I was like, these like B-list actors are in here and like everybody's <laughs> got very different goals. I'm talking about what I'm trying to do with like geopolitics. People are like, geo what? They're all just trying to get acting roles. And I was like, is this self-actualization? I don't do self-actualization. <laughs> and, like, anyway. where's the executive part of this? <laughs> right. So it culminates in them... To, like I had signed a contract, a six month thing. I'd fulfilled my thing. I was like, I'm not attending anymore. Um, they kept trying. I had to shut down a bank account because they kept <gasps> trying to take money out of my bank account. Oh my I wrote them Shit. a treatise because they were trying, they, they were using things like, okay, I know this is not popular, but if you don't already know the Gandhi stuff about him trying to test his will by laying next to naked preteens, this is a real thing that used to happen. You know, there's like, a lot of controversy. Well, to your point about not succession, et cetera, not everyone is all good, all bad, whatever. Right. And they would really like harp on, I'm, you know, once you bring up Ayn Rand to me, I'm sorry, I'm out. But um, <laughs> that's a little bit high school. Yeah. That's like. And I just wrote, I had had it and I wrote this treatise to the Mexico City leadership of like, Jeez. you guys, I still have the email. I can pull it up. I'll send oh, it to you. Oh my God. But Shit. I was just you like, you're want to read completely... a little bit of it? Do you want to read a little oh of it? God, I can, can you? I can find it on my... Okay, well, okay. well, well, oh well what Becky goes, but, but just oh keep it mean... I wouldn't say it was in Nixium because they kept trying to get... Right. There's a thing called V Week. And I did... Yes, yes, week. yes. V-week. 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 Only We've because I'm a many. very good volleyball player. And oh they were on the ball. Oh my God, volleyball is a huge part of this cult. Volleyball is an enormous part of this cult. And I, but they were trying, they were like, you're such a good volleyball player. You have to come this out. This is a bombshell like, interview happening oh my God. right now. Do you, you, do you realize? realize what could have happened to you? you could have if, happened to you? The volleyball, the volleyball was like the main the way to get the girls in. Oh my yeah. God. You could have, oh my God. You could have been and a sex then they slave. All, I can't so even what happened? They all no, come back. Kristen would never the, have been that. No, like this no, is one no, of those no. most intelligent, no. strong But if they needed someone to go in and spy, you could have been it. And I'd be like. Hey Keith, so wait. how about you get a little branding now? Um, Holy so shit. I just like so they come back from B Week, the same group, and that was part of the break where I was like, why are the gender dynamics so different all of a sudden? It seems like everyone must Had have an orgy with each other. Like now everything's different. And then I was like, I'm out. Wow. Um it and and I reconnected recently with the fr- the friend. To her credit, she sent me a long email before the New York Times because I mean, imagine like I. T- take the paper every day and i'm like opening the new york times and, you, and i'm you like were involved very crap. close to when it was exposed like you're not yes. even like yeah wow and thankfully this is a plug oh, yeah. for why you should get a therapist before a crisis hits because thankfully i have a very good therapist and i could immediately and she was like you know she never told me you should drop out of that thing but she was just like you know make sure you're well, because in eyes wide open I, Right, because it, it on paper and very much even it seems like in person, it had a lot of really good things and a, and a really nice. Like, Wait, how you know, long were you involved angle. with it? Um, I would say, well, involved with fighting them for my money back is different, but I I attended like two or three times a week in the evenings for probably six months. Wow. Wow. But they would like, it would be weird. I'd be like, I have to go to Indonesia for work for a month. And they're like, well, no, you're supposed to be here. And I'm like, are you, are you listening? You know like, just, just, <laughs> no, I'm not going to attend ESP from afar. The whole thing was weird. You know, and, they videoed everything, right? Oh yeah. They Every, documented everything. Thousands because the, of the, hours. the documentary has, them, you know, get people like, oh, you, you know, you had women talking about assaults they'd experienced met at people talking about their child abuse people talking about all this kind of stuff and and having gone to the modern institute of international studies and being very familiar with the fbi's um uh definition of a cult i kept going wait like protein deprivation group speak they let you go to the bathroom by yourself but that's usually the last frontier like they were hitting four out of the five (laughs) of the fbi and you you never learned powerpoint so no, like, that, <laughs> after all of that, 
Well, like you got, I mean, like, honestly, thank God you're okay. Because we like in the, we were friends we learned, during this, like, this like, is like in the middle yeah. of our 20 year friendship. It's like, I'm trying to improve. I've gone through a breakup and the I've amount gone of people. I need to improve myself. Mm-hmm. The amount of people that spent oh, years in litigation with that. Them, like, you know, in litigation to get their money back or, or that they were then sued by them and lost tons of money and had like bankrupt because of this is, Thank God, like nothing, you know, I'm sure the time you and, dedicate and, to well, it helps when you have a mother who's a lawyer and I can pull out the legally is pretty oh. fast. And I think they that and Bank of America to their credit. I mean, for once they were like, yeah, right. They were like, yeah. we have a whole there. There's so many freaking cults in this country. They're like, yeah, we have a standard form you fill out. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, oh, my God. What an like, expo Oh my God, Farnham, thank you for sharing with us. This is amazing. It used to also, be very embarrassing, but now I can talk about it. No, no and I think it's, it, it's- First of all, is I don't think, I think one of the things this show does is it makes you really feel, th- these people are not dumb. Mark Vicente is not dumb. No. Sarah Edmondson, these no. are smart These are smart, people. who were just trying to make the world better, make themselves better, and, you know, and they got pulled into this. And it's I like a boiling they, frog, right? Right. Yeah, like it, and it was kind of like- Pre sober curious, like they'd have get togethers where they'd be like, you know, we're going to get together and not drink and hang out. And I was like, well, that's cool. Like, yeah, let's convert. You know, they had like, they, you, they'd they organize hikes. There would be, I didn't go on those things because, you know, that's hiking. Yeah. But, um, but <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's really, I think it's very brave for you to share. Thank you so much. And it's really important because, like, if anything, Shy and I learned from this is that this can literally happen to anyone. It, literally. Truly anyone and i'm one of the most cynical and skeptical people that i know this and it happened to me and it's unbelievable and um and another good thing i was thankful for and then i'll pass it to becky is that it was it's very rare that i got to watch i don't know how many episodes shy like 15 episodes of tv in real time with shy as if we were together because we we caught up and then we were text each other together and like simultaneously and that was pretty cool i don't know if that'll ever happen again but it was cool to cross continent you know be in it with somebody in real time so yeah and i and if you're into cults i definitely recommend watching this it's pretty i mean ali Ali, Ali, when I was telling her about watching this, she watched a few minutes with me and, and would watch when I was watching it here and there. And she just said, the first sign for me that this is not the end all and be all is that salvation will never be found in Albany, New York. Because she grew up in Albany. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she was like, I was like, Albany? <laughs> That's the best line from Albany. Uh, I can tell uh, you the Messiah is not there. Uh, Becky Corman, right, Beck. the, the world is waiting. Well, if, and I know you have if great you are into If you are into this gossip right here that you just heard, then, then I oh, highly, highly recommend one. the that's podcast, Normal Gossip. Normal Gossip <laughs> is yeah, just a that's morsel, fantastic. like a little morsel of somebody's everyday gossip. However, in this case, unlike the vow, in this case, nobody gets hurt. No animals are hurt. No people are hurt. It's not traumatic. It's just a little juicy tidbit of a story from a friend of a friend's life that gets retold on this podcast. Every week is a different story. And it's just so entertaining. It's so delightful. It's such like, it, 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 you know, satisfies that little craving that you have of just knowing an absurd story from someone's life. And the 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 host always has very funny guests on whom she's telling the stories to, and then they react and she asks them questions. And the like, guests are at fantastic. this point in the story, I, I what would it. you do? Like, they what would you do? Guests. Who do you think the villain is? You know, right. lots of things like that. It's great. Becky so I, recommended that to me, and that was awesome. Yeah. So I I'm so thankful for that because in a year where I had to you know, pack up and move into a new house and then unpack and just all these things that are very, very tedious, pop in the AirPods, listen to a few episodes. And it motivated me to do so much stuff. Cause if I knew I could listen to one more episode, I'm like, all right, I'll unpack a few more boxes. So highly recommend that. I just like, I'm just very thankful for it. Um, other things that I'm thankful for this year is Shy started taking me to a bunch of concerts and shows. And this is sort of like my, you know, 
I'm now in that phase of COVID where I'm vaccinated, my kids are vaccinated, feeling a lot less anxious and fearful and getting back out into the world. And I'm just really thankful. I've been able to see some really fun shows. We saw Muna together. We saw Petey together. We went to go see Amy Schumer and Chris Rock. Um, we have Chris tickets to Rock? see. Yeah, yeah, that was, that it was, was really one cool. of the best. That was a bucket list yeah. kind of. Yeah, that was truly. Um, and we have some other shows coming up. We're going to, I'm just really thankful that I'm like out in the world again. Shine Air are going to go see cats. Do that. We're going to go see cats. We're going to go see a favorite band no, of mine and Lily from cats. when we were in university. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stars, we have that coming up. Um, we're going to go see it'll, it'll we're going to go see um just for us Alex Edelman's Oh yeah yeah next week. The Woolly Mammoth we're going to go next see week. that. Very excited about that. Really really thankful for just being back out in the world. Another thing and I'm putting this in the thankful category because I haven't seen it yet so I can't say it's one of my best of the year but I'm so thankful that the new avatar is coming out. Avatar Way of the Water. As you I, know I have a weird James thing Cameron for the avatar movies check. for the <laughs> Because <laughs> you're the only person. The He's only making person. most of his money on me seeing these movies, seeing his movies over and over again. But I, I am just, you know, we've been waiting a long time. I can't explain it. I have a weird thing for Avatar. I just, I get like entranced by it. And if, if it, if I, it's one of those movies where if it's on, I flip to a channel or I see or so, I just, I have to, I have Becky, to finish watching it. As your older brother, I have made you endure many things. I will 100% go see this with you in 3D or 4D in like the theater where they shake the chairs and throw mist at you. I will go yeah, see. So we were all going to see it together. I want to go see it riding on a one of those dragons. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what they're... I'm just I'm just committing. So I'm, go if we all go thank see it together. you. I'm really thankful for that. Yeah. Um, Allie, and lastly, I back. think that's fine. Um, lastly, I am most thankful for the quotability of a show that came into our lives this summer That's because of, of my tech. of my of my dear friend Joey the probably the most quotable show we've had I mean in ages oh, yeah. Shorzy yes and I best right insults. Sure. the best insults the best quotes filmed me crying oh yeah oh you're right you're right you're right you right. did watch the we interrupt you Becky. That's true. I mean I we we could get into it now, but I every time so living in Spain with Lily this summer, there's a lot of roundabouts. You're always going through a roundabout. And yeah. every time we went through a roundabout, I am telling you, every single time, almost like it was a drinking game, but not because we were driving, we would have to say, it's not complicated, it's not crypto, it's not a it's not a roundabout. It's just <laughs> I can't and if you don't find that funny, go back and go and watch that show because you will find it. And if you don't find it funny, then shut the fuck up, Sanguinac. That's all I have to say. <laughs> the best. It's just it, uh, so uh, quotable. It's so funny. And um, so I'm thankful that we're characters that will stand on either side of their one the sisters. Yeah, the sisters. The sisters. Oh my god, their delivery. It's it's so good. so good. There's just so many things in there. Um anyway, I and and I will say, I you know, when you when you look at pop culture today. You know, with the exception, let's say, of the show Reservation Dogs, Shorzy has probably some of the best uh, uh, Indigenous, Native, Native, Native Canadian, I guess, in in this um, representation on TV, and it's uh, pretty awesome to see that, and feels you know even more authentically Canadian in that in that representation. So I'm thankful for that and that it's so funny and they are so funny everyone is so I'm funny so glad show. you brought that up to remind me about it yeah, oh. that show is amazing um and then i'll just close out if anyone has any like short wrecks uh stand up for drummers fred armison i watched it with farnham oh, earlier this week it's so funny and so specific to musicians like it, like it's funny because it's Fred Armisen and then there's a level of specificity like when he starts talking about the fact that his bass pedal his drum pedal is called the Iron Cobra like I've had an Iron Cobra <laughs> since 1997 or 96 like my first bass drum pedal was an Iron Cobra and it's still on my drum set so like things like that were just incredible plus he's got like the drummer from Green Day is a guest in the in like he has all these guest musicians it was really cool um, and then famous drummers in the audience, famous all yeah, famous drummers in the audience. And oh, then awesome. I would say 
I just want to riff on Menorah in the middle for a second because we watched it last night with mom. And, well, dad was asleep through most of it, but he loved it too. And he, he, there is this like stressful, like tight sphincter. I go into a movie that is all Jewish because I'm like, oh, how's it going to be? How's it going to represent us? Is it going to, you know, and, and, and truthfully, it's a holiday movie made about Hanukkah. I'm, I'm like, my expectations are not that this is going to be like a tome on modern anti-Semitism, but I'm also like, oh, how's it going to make us look? So there's a little bit of anxiety going into it. And it's such a warm and sweet movie. And, uh, Dan Byrne, the amazing performer, singer, songwriter, Dan Byrne has multiple funny songs in this film and it starts on him. And that just sets the tone, the Jewishness in it, the environment is, is so, is so authentic. Um, but, but the Jewishness isn't the motivation of the story. It really is the world in which these people live. And it's part of, part of what they're doing, but it's not like, it's not like they're, it, 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 it's not, it's, it's both the environment, but it's not overdone. Um, there's some fantastic acting. Christian De La Fuente, who was in Driven, the Stallone movie from 20 years ago, is hilarious as the as the um, uh, fiance boyfriend character. Sarah Silverman delivers a performance. She's she's a small part. Delivers a performance that had Ali like crying at the end, like because it was so heartfelt. How much she and her sister um, just nailed it. And Lucy Devito uh was was great as the lead and so it is made to look like one of those hallmark holiday movies so i don't want like anyone to go in there and expect like schindler's list or anything like that um uh um but it, it really it really delivers and i also I say they, I, I hope, hope they you wouldn't, wouldn't expect the turn up on on an and on an even deeper level on a deeper level like it deconstructs stereotypes um in terms of um, and the singing of the prayers is authentic. Like they actually use the tunes and they actually pronounce things the, the way Jews are do. Actually Jewish. Yeah, and and so how nice. And 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 the Jews that are the main characters are not good at business. They are not rich. They're not poor. But like it isn't like the I hate this term, but the jappy description of like Jews that we often see in other things. Right. Um, they're people who happen to be Jewish. Right. And it's yeah. rich and it's part of their lives right. and it's yeah. part of the identity. But like the movie, the show is not about whether or not the boyfriend is or isn't Jewish. It's about this family and what's going on in their life at the time. And and I really like that. Um, and then just the one, mo the most hilarious thing was, and this is no fault of the filmmakers, but the, we watch with the subtitles because mom can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. And when they'd get to very Jewish words, the translations were hilarious. Latka, <laughs> latka were locusts. So the mom comes in at one point and says, who wants locusts? And synagogue <laughs> was repeatedly shown as Santagog. Oh. And there were like five others. <laughs> it was incredible. So, anyways, Menorah in the middle, delightful. Do you think? Do you do you think with the closed captioning, they 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 kind of did that on purpose just to um? <laughs> if you're a lot of list. just to like make you laugh, no. just I've to make no, like I, the Jewish people watching maybe, you laugh. Maybe because they were so like funny. They were all so funny. Every time it was a Jewish word, there was some Gog, I mean, that's that's a lot. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's pretty image. good, right? Because Gog is an award on its own. Um, so that that's what I've got. Uh, Becky and Lil, anything else to recommend? I'm excited that Wednesday's coming out. It came out. When, oh, yeah. I'm hearing good things about it. Uh, yeah. It got oh, yeah. great reviews. I'd so watch that's that. something, something exciting for the weekend. Shell and Reed has been doing a killer cosplay of that. She has. She does look like her, too, which is amazing. <laughs> I guess that's the talent of a cosplayer. You look like a lot of people. <laughs> well, you can, but you can, but she looks like her and then will look like, you know, uh, what's Yennefer. her name? Black Widow, right? Or Yennefer, right? Like she, you know. Right. Um, so yeah, that's it. And happy Thanksgiving, guys. Happy Grateful Thanksgiving. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for my sisters. Agreed. My creative Very partners. Grateful. You're the best. Becky, Very how about you? Grateful. Thankful for the food. Who Becky. am I grateful for? Am I supposed no, to say who I'm am I grateful for? Signing off. What are you watching? Becky's Becky's already making the pot. Left. Becky's left to make a galette. Is she making a galette? I love no, that. No, I'm making for for Allie, who I love very dearly. I'm making a pumpkin pie for her. So I'm making, Becky, I'm Becky not doing a galette. I typically do a galette. I'm doing a pumpkin pie. Becky made a very good last galette. night with, with, with 
dough from cheese board in Berkeley. It was out of control. Becky and Vlad's pizza last night. It was absolutely yeah. so sad. And the salad was board. good. You know, I mean, Becky makes the best salads. That's what I'm in charge of for Thanksgiving. I'm in charge of pies and the salad at dinner. Perfect. Those are those are the two things I'm making. You know, I mean, Stan, I I know my strengths. Staying in my lane. I'll try to keep it short, but I have a couple of recs that I didn't think of earlier. Um, one is for like preteen age kids, Tales of the Jedi, the animated oh. one on Disney. I've watched three out of the six episodes so far with a 13 year old. I think they're the animation is incredible. The score is incredible. It's very fascinating as a non like totally steeped in Star Wars person. So good for oh, cool. kids of that age. Nice. Um, <laughs> Mo, I don't know. Oh, you've told me about Mo I Houston. About Mo. Mo Houston haven't Mo watched it. Actually, yeah. maybe interest in Houston. However, and maybe it, we are now by we, I mean um, me myself and I hypersensitive to how Jewish people are characters are portrayed. The reason why I pointed it out to you was I wanted to see how you felt about the char- one character portrayal they're trying to be inclusive i'm not sure if they hit the mark but it's it's a workable situation and for people who ha- either are members of the muslim community or have spent a lot of time around the muslim community there's just a lot of good jokes that you'll get there um also do not go see triangle of sadness instead no. watch the menu the oh home- my god no oh. triangle of sadness horrible. looks horrible. miserable it looks horrible. miserable also so i want to watch just a bunch of miserable they, people barfing on a boat for two hours that, no thank you no, also they restart them the editor should be well i won't say taken out back and shot but something equivalent because it's just it is it's ridiculous <laughs> now sadly one of the main characters did die before die. the release. And I yeah. surmise that that's why maybe, and the director had already run the Palm Door twice. I surmise that's why they kind of like gave it to them. And they've like totally played up Woody Harrelson. It's a bit part. Anyway, there are very good performances in it. I think that we'll see one actress, one supporting actress. Her name Roger. escaped me. Um, I don't think she's Filipina American. I think she is Filipina. Um, she gives a fantastic performance. Otherwise, don't go see it. See the menu instead. Last we week, saw the menu and we, there was confusion. You thought you were yeah. seeing the menu. And, and I thought. And I would thought, thought I was seeing was Triangle seeing. Sadness because I kept watching the menu saying like, where's Woody Harrelson? Isn't he in this movie? <laughs> but the menu I do really want to see the menu. Very, I do really want to see the, kind of dark the menu. And then lastly, because you brought up Vermont earlier, Rumble Strip Podcast, which is a critically acclaimed podcast, has in particular a great uh, episode on Camp Xenon, I think it's called, which is a camp for abled and differently abled people, summer camp in Vermont. It's one of the most touching 15 minutes you can listen to. It's fabulous. Mm-hmm. Check it out immediately. Wonderful. Also, Shy, thank you for taking me to the roots at the Kennedy Center earlier this year. That was really, really a long COVID highlight. Uh, that was really, well. really awesome. You can watch that show on PBS. That's uh, true. Uh, 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 co-produced, directed. I, I don't know what title she has, but Kristen Fosdick, different than Kristen Farnham, our cousin, um, was one of the main people who who directed that that show. Uh, uh, Lily and Becky, where can people follow you? You can follow us. You can follow us on Instagram at FNM Sisters. That's the Friday Night Movie Sisters. Official. But Lily's doing most of the posting, so she should probably get to announce it. But I okay, maybe what I morally support. <laughs> um, I did. I think I you send you pictures. For Thanksgiving. You guys are doing great. I love it. It's so I much fun. It, I really feel complete on social media now. Um do you want anyone to follow you, Farnham? I can't remember the my ID. You're, you're, you're sort of like no, I'd no follow. You're me. like yeah. you're you're covert. Anyway. I'll follow you. Don't follow me. You follow us, <laughs> and and you can follow me at Pancake and the number four table. That's Pancake and the number four table on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow all of the Friday Night Movie shenanigans at Friday Night Movie. Sign up for a newsletter on FridayNightMoviePod.com. And if you know, you haven't gotten a letter, you're not going to get spam. You haven't gotten anything in a year if you signed up for this newsletter, but it means a lot to us. The theme music is by What Does It Eat? And uh, the new album is out, Scraps. It's really fun. It's really cool. We'll have Howie on at some point this year to talk about it. We've got a great music video out with lots of cute dogs. And um, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. Love you.